Yeah. Oh, are we filming? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, tell me about Warner Brothers. Yeah. Um, and how it was like working there. What's the process on the other side? Like, mm -hmm. what do you do? What's day to day? It is different in that you're overseeing more stuff. You know, you're not in the room as much. Uh, we would cast a couple things a year, but you know, it is a lot you would of cast like a couple projects or like we leads would, of movies we, you'd have sessions. We for. would cast a couple movies in house. So like okay. we did Man of Steel in house, Argo in house, Batman Superman in house. Um, so you were reading all those people in your house? I sure, in your house. I sure was. Uh, which is super fun. But you have more time though. So like Batman Superman, I swear to God, I worked on that for two years. Whereas mm. in freelance, you've got eight to ten weeks. Right, right, right. <laughs> we had longer. They could bring us on earlier and even when it was filming, we could still work on it. So that's a big difference. You're not reading co-stars unless it's like a reshoot. Do you want Brad Pitt or George Clooney? More lists, more A-list avails, things like that. And is, is it all just offers or do they... Do they test for like the leads of these big movies? Does like Brad Pitt come in and test? Brad Pitt, no. Okay. Um, but I think more people than you would think would read for a, you know, a big blockbuster. Right. Um, but they're just reading with like the execs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. In my department, they would read with like the EVP of casting. They'll kind of consult us like a casting director hasn't been brought on yet. Like maybe the movie's not greenlit, and so they call us and say, "Hey, can I get a list of you know, twenty people? You know." But again, it, it's the Right. Name your right. And then once a director, they usually have a go-to person. So if Soderbergh's doing a movie, they're going to hire Carmen Cuba. You know, and so we'll still work closely with, with Carmen, Carmen. Right. But... Then she kind of takes over. But she, yeah, she's the one, like, reading all stuff. There was times when, let's say, it was shooting in London, but the... Uh, so there was the casting director in London, but they were... The director was in L.A. I sat in on a lot of director sessions, so I don't have credit on those movies. <laughs> right. Um, but I was there for most of it. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, so I was very involved. Yeah. Um, so again, that's one of the downsides. No credit, but right. steady paycheck. Talk about the approval process a little bit. At Warner Brothers? Yeah. Or just at studio in general. So to be clear, I was in the feature department. Um, but it's actually an interesting question because when I was there... Uh, Greg Silverman was the head of production for most of the time, oh. and Greg is now oh. the transition. Yeah. Uh, Greg now started Stampede Ventures, where Jen and I are based our out office. of our office. Uh, so that kind of came full circle. I don't eloquently do the pitch, <laughs> the Stampede pitch well, but they want to disrupt the greenlight process. That was part of Greg's initiative in starting his own company, was to again to kind of get things done quicker. And so on, like Pink Skies Ahead, it'd be like, "Hey, Greg, do you like this actor? Yes, done." Boom. Again, I'm simplifying it, but working in other offices, you had to get first the director, then the producers, then the studio, then the network, and there's just there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. They usually say yes, but it takes a week, a week to get that answer. Mm -hmm. um, so the nice thing about working for a smaller production company, we just pop in their office and go, "Hey, what do you think of this? Yes, no, great, mm -hmm. done." Right. Like let's say Carmen's like reading people for the supporting role of this movie, mm -hmm. and then she has her director session. He likes them mm -hmm. then what happens when it comes to you guys like how is, is it approved by just the casting person does like all the execs have to see it is like the development people like do you have the other people besides casting that sees it every studio is different right so i think some studio execs are more involved than others sometimes you like specifically have to get their approval before you do anything um but it, it really is project by project because clint eastwood kind of does whatever he wants right <laughs> you know yeah. uh so for jeff and eve <laughs> it's a little different if it's a lower budget and maybe it's not as an established director the studio might have an opinion about we want a recognizable face and that happened to me a couple times where we had an amazing actor uh that if i told you who it was like you guys would be like that person's amazing uh and the studio was like mm, it's not not maybe enough uh or i hate to say it but sometimes it was i don't like their nose we would test people and it was like i don't like nothing specific just right. uh, I don't like their smile. I don't like their teeth. Like like, I, like crazy things that you would. Uh, that then we had to start the search over, or they just say we're not green lighting it unless you're bringing someone else, and then the uh -huh. movie pushes for years. And that's for the leads. But what about for like the smaller roles? Once it's down to like local casting, like the director gets to lead. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Even the supporting roles that aren't the leads is kind of on. Uh, you guys go through that process, or is it? They'll kind of usually, and again, take this with a grain of salt. So, early on in the process say we want a cameo for this role you know and obviously things change as you go along uh but usually no going in you know and if it's someone where just the best actor gets the job then it's sometimes it gets through quickly it sometimes there's, you have trouble casting a role and sometimes you can't you get a bunch of passes and then you know so that's i think a lot of times where the the studio execs will step in share list help check avails uh go, you know who haven't you thought of it you know and 
knowing the studio's taste. We go right. Right back to the taste thing we were talking about earlier. Right. The studio execs know generally who the execs are going to, they'll be like, they'll never approve so and so. Right, right. You right. should kind of lean in this direction. For the roles that are red. Once you're to that point, it's much less involved. So they're just like saying approved. Yeah. Like, yeah. But they could also not approve for stupid reasons too. Mm -hmm. We're going to do some rapid fire questions. Oh! <laughs> yeah. What makes an actor stand out in there? Confident. <laughs> what makes an actor stand out in their headshot? They need to look like themselves. How do you feel about props? I'm more okay than her. I hate them. <laughs> Miming. No. Small no. talk. Sure. Yeah. Holding sides. Fine. Fine. Starting over. Mm. Not at the very end. Yeah. <laughs> Especially of a five page team. Questions before they start. Sure. sure. Asking for a second take. Mm. Or additional takes. Mm. Not usually. We'll usually ask if we want it. How many takes do you usually do? One to two. Yeah. How many takes do you said on? One. One. Always one? One. Yeah. How many new actors do you bring in? More than you think. And what makes you pick an actor, like a newer actor? Good picture, good rep. For a smaller role? Same. Same thing? Do you send reels on with auditions? No. Yeah. Occasionally. Occasionally. Rarely. Well, how do you feel about self tapes? Yeah. yeah. Always. Sure. Always. Unsolicited. No. No. <laughs> Hard no. What about sending multiple takes of a scene in the self tape? I don't think don't, so. Don't, don't, no. Don't do it. So one take. One take. Send just your best. And pet peeves. I have a lot. They're blind blanking. <laughs> Pass. Patterns with actors that book. Ooh. Confidence. Confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Patterns with actors that don't book. They're, they're, they're fine. Unprepared. They're fine. Unprepared. They're, Unprepared. They're, yeah. they're okay. Favorite thing about casting? Being creative. See it come to life. <laughs> Least favorite thing about casting? Detaching leads. Bane yeah. of my existence. <laughs> Mean people. How do actors get on your radar? New actors. Either take our class or have a good, um, rep. Have a good rep that introduces us. Do you go to showcase? Yes. Yeah. Do you go to plays in theater? Yes. Yes. Do you watch a lot of TV? Yes. So much. Tons. <laughs> you should see my list. I have it on my phone. Uh, but I've watched all the things she has on my <laughs> What makes somebody straight to producers versus premium? If we know their work, if the agent makes us oh. the credits. Yeah. I'm going to go back to Bet Peeves. I am convinced oh. that every prop that you ever need for any scene <laughs> can be cell phone or your sides. So or a water bottle, No. No. No, because they make noise. I hate mining. Just like imply it. 20 pictures on breakdown. Yeah. Forget it. I assume yeah. you're a co-star actor. Mm -hmm. I don't need to see you as a cop and a lawyer and a doctor. I'm like, no. What if those are the commercial photos though? Like the commercial people want them to have them. Then do commercials. Yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. Good to know. I have 20. <laughs> Not after now. I'll go look back. I'll yeah. go look at yours. See if I approve. We're going to do a profile. Yeah. <laughs> Another pet peeve. People put things on their resume that they were in a show that we had cast. And they weren't. And uh, so, and we have no. called agents out on that before, and, it, and then we will blacklist them because it's like, don't Ooh. come into don't my work. office saying, I cast you and I've never even, I've never, I don't know you. Yeah. Or put and guest so. star when it was a co star. Like, yeah. unless we've given you verbal consent. Con confirmation mm -hmm. that you yeah. can put that. Like, because sometimes yeah. we'll be like, oh, you know, do us this favor, take the co star, mm -hmm. but sure, you can put it on the resume. Yeah. yeah. But don't on your own accord. <laughs> yeah. Just decide to yeah. do that. Be nice to the assistants. Yes. They will tell us. And interns. Mm hmm. Costumes. Oh. Ooh. What? Uh, Suggesting the role. Yeah. Yes. Versus you don't yeah. need oh, a head-to-toe yeah. sailor outfit. No. What if you want to wear a head-to-toe <laughs> sailor outfit? I mean, you can. But if it's... If it's, it's Saturday. <laughs> if it's straight out of anything goes and we're doing like a period piece. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> cool. We're just going to laugh. I don't think I've ever hired anybody who wore a costume. Typically, how many people do you bring in per role? Like on a lead versus a sporting versus like a co-star or a day player. For movies, leads it really depend because like literally we could cast it off of like two, like one session if it's like straight to director or something. Yeah. Or you can get up to like a hundred if you can't find it. Two, like two hundred, a thousand yeah. if it's Star Wars. A thousand if it's Batman yeah. versus Superman. So Smaller roles we bring in usually about fifteen. And it's like one session usually, yeah. one and done. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And unless you can't find it. Unless you can't find it, then you do. Mm -hmm. yeah. How long are your sessions usually when you're feeling like leads? I try to keep them around two hours just because it's more for our sakes than anybody else because we can start to lose focus. So And we have yeah. other stuff to do as well. Yeah. So we try like, to keep them two hours so we can catch ourselves up and then maybe do like an yeah. afternoon. Like. At most, two two-hour sessions. And do you do you guys confer after the session and talk about who you liked mm -hmm. and you didn't like? And, yeah. And yeah, so we each keep our separate notes and then we'll sit there at the end and go through it. And that's where like if we yeah. disagree, usually whoever likes them will win out and we'll one, just read someone, and watch them. 
someone yeah. will fight for them or will be like, mm, watch it back. Yeah. Right. Or like my, I tend to write like a novel and Jen tends to write yes, no, yes, no. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe. And then it is pretty if funny we're to both I just write random together. words. I'm like, yeah. blue. And, it, <laughs> and if we're both a maybe, then we see maybe how many people we're sending. So yeah, how many people do you normally send on to the producers? So let's say we saw 20 people, yeah. eight. Not even. Yeah, I'm, I'm like five to eight. Five eight. Yeah, and it's if it's for like the smaller roles, maybe like three or four, just so that, and then we like pick from these. And it depends where we're at in the process. So at the beginning, is it more? You want to keep some in your back pocket too. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so like some people you don't send on right away. Yeah. So if we send like our favorites, and then they're like, I actually wanted this, we'll be like, actually, we have that. <laughs> is it always like five to eight, or is it like just yeah, just like, like, like not... sent ten before? Like if yeah. somebody comes in and kills it, like we're never just gonna like not yeah. send it just because we have eight already. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, no, because some, yeah. some some offices, it's like, yeah. oh. we're sending our top no, five. No, if we five. both no. agree and love people, we will always yeah. send them, no yeah. matter how many. Do you, like, write little notes by the person for them, or, like, highlight, like, bold or star anyone, We're, or is it just kind of like, these are people I'm This is them? one thing that we disagree yeah, on. Yeah, we actually disagree on this one. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> I found a point of contention. Yeah. So I tend to, in the offices I worked for, you just send the link. Unless there's a special yeah. case that you're trying to, but usually you just, you send the link and then once they go, oh, I like that, then you can kind of start to weigh in. Where's Jen? Yeah. I've always been in offices where we put our opinions on them. So like if there's 10 people on the link and you're like, these five were great, but there's certain things about this person or like they didn't do, like I always just, we would always add notes to them. I've always been taught to like give my opinion. Right, so right, right. I'm always like, I love this person. Or there was some, because I think sometimes even when they're watching them on screen, you don't get that sense in the room and you're just like, you want to like give them an extra push if you really believe in somebody. Yeah. Whereas like, I'll give it, but I just like to give them a blank slate and then weigh in. Yeah. Um, but I'm very particular about my order. Mm-hmm. So I tend oh, to put yeah. my favorites That's first. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, whereas I am very, like, I'm like, do not send that link until I've looked at the, because I curate it. Where do I just, you, and so, I, so like, you, watch it. Yeah, yeah. So you, you put your favorites first. When you have director sessions, do you bring in your favorites back first? Like, is there an order to do director sessions too? It's usually who no. they like. Yeah, if you have a director who can kind of only focus on one thing, then you kind of bring in all that one role at the same time. Right. But I don't think when you're setting up sessions, I don't think it matters that much because half the time it's blown out of the water anyway by actor schedules. I actually wouldn't put, like, my favorite. For, you want them to warm up a bit. You don't yeah. want to put your favorites mm-hmm. first or last because if at the end of the session people might be tired, right. um... But not to say that the first or last has never gotten the role. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. Yeah. But there's... <laughs> oh, man, my time is <laughs> 10 a.m. Like, well, I'm right. not getting that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a bit of a strategy, but yeah. like Jen said, it completely falls apart. And people yeah. are like, I need to come live. Right, like, yeah, so that just... the schedule all yeah. the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, ready. <laughs> I'm not ready. How do you guys feel about, like, gifts, postcards, dropping off? Postcards, bad. Don't, okay. waste, don't waste your money. Gifts, cool, if yeah. there's a reason. Not if not it's, just a random gift. Like if they book something. Yeah. Again, for, don't waste your money but if don't. it's a pre-read. Yeah. Like if again a, a thank you note it's is, is welcome. We appreciate it. But a blind submission. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. It, it goes in the garbage. Like the interns yeah. usually open it. I kind of noticed over the years. Like back when I very first started in LA, we would cast somebody and we'd always get a thank you gift afterwards. And not to say that every actress would do this, but it's like it has gone to a point where maybe one does out of the entire cast, and yeah. it's like. And we get so excited because we're like, holy cow. I've never really understood that mentality because, again, if we get a job, we always try to give a thank you. Sometimes you come in, you kill it. We don't have to fight for you. But sometimes there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that, like, we fight our butts off. And And I will say if you have, if you're, like, let's say you've read multiple times and you can probably, like, you've worked with us a lot. I remember all the big thank you gifts I've ever gotten. Mm -hmm. Me too. I still wear some of them. I've drank some of them. If you've gone to bat for someone, it's extra meaningful when you get that. But again, if it's just a pre-read, or if you've made scale on the movie, like, again, a thank you yeah. note is, you know, right. more than, okay. or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or a thank you email or anything. Yeah. So. How do you feel about people just dropping off, dropping by and dropping off their headshot? I hate it. It's a little awkward, because again, you never know, we, we could be in a session, we could be in a meeting. I can say, too, I will speak for past bosses that not one of them liked it. Like, okay. um, where we work now, we have a lot of barriers to get to us, so half the time it'll yeah, end up with an right. intern anyway. At other offices where they don't work within a production office, mm-hmm. like they, it's just them, and you walk in and you're talking to the assistant, and mm-hmm. it becomes very awkward. And then yeah. there's like, as soon as they leave, there's a discussion of like, who was that? Why were they here? Like, and it's yeah. just, right. yeah, you have yeah. to remember, like, we do live in an unsafe world sometimes, and it's yeah. just like right. to be able to like leave our door open all day. It's just you never know who's walking in, and right. so I would highly discourage that. And even when it's so nice when people bake us things and bring it, I know some casting directors will not touch that. Right. They're like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
if there's a cookie, I'll eat it. But <laughs> I don't know who brought it. Again, if it's delivered yeah. to my assistant and there's, even if there's like a card, I'm like, who's this? What? Okay, yeah. I'll eat it. I think there are better uses of your time in that instance. Mm-hmm. And also, if you do have a relationship with us and you want to stop by, I'm totally cool with that, but I highly recommend going to your agent first. Just some sort of, again, talk to our assistant and be like, when are they free? Because mm-hmm. right. uh, we've had wrap gifts or, you know, things delivered that were so sweet and thoughtful, but we weren't, we were at a meeting yeah. across town. And right. so... It's, it's like sitting outside our, you know, locked yeah. office right. and we hope that we get yeah. it. Right. Or somebody, yeah. like, delivered something right busy. before Christmas and we weren't there. Both of us and had so left. Yeah. it ended up getting thrown away. Cause, yeah. And, I mean, one of the sweet girls in our office sent us a picture, but I was like, well, now I feel bad this whole thing went to waste because yeah. we weren't right. in town. How do you feel about actors uh, reaching out to you via social media? I think you're a little bit more open than I am. <laughs> That's what I'm laughing. I, uh, I don't love it. I, you can follow me, you can watch my life, and, but I'm not the best with like DMing. Like, uh, like our work Instagram is open, our Facebook is open, my own personal is open, so like anyone can follow me, but like I just want... <laughs> I'm just not good at social media in general. So, like, I didn't even realize there was an other mailbox that's not, like, who I follow for the longest time. And so I felt really bad because then I looked, I finally figured out because I was the like, why is this one. number <laughs> not going away on my, because I'm one of those people who needs to clear out their phone yeah. and, like, not have any red numbers on their phone. So I'm looking, I'm, like, trying to figure this out, and I finally <laughs> realized there's another mailbox. Like the mailbox <laughs> I'm just horrible at social media. What could I say? I'm like, But, like, so if they follow your uh, casting Instagram and yeah. message you there? Or yeah, like, I don't check that one right, as yeah. much. Um, yeah. Are, assistant or intern tends to run that more yeah. and if it's like a personal message however yeah. i'm always like when we teach classes and stuff i always say feel free to follow me i'm usually pretty good about responding to things because it's easier uh, than sometimes getting like a, a long email where it's like right. there's questions and it's like a whole thing and i'm just like oh, i'm busy i can't respond mm-hmm. to this right now whereas if they send you a quick message on instagram you can just like it right you know mm-hmm. and so then i feel like i've responded i don't like it when people i've never met do it like mm-hmm. i find that yeah because i just don't have to do with it they're like uh, check out this thing I did and mm-hmm. I respect them for hustling and trying to make connections um, but I'm just like I don't I don't know mm-hmm. you so again feel free to like follow and stuff um, but if it's like if I've met you whether that's in like we've read you I've met you in the world right. I've met you at a class like whatever it is um, I'm fine with like DMs and stuff because then it's just like an easier way to keep in touch and again I can see their picture and be like oh yeah that was that person that I met what about okay if actors have access to the breakdowns and they see something they write for and they want to do a drop off for that this role that you are currently casting. I feel like that's archaic. Yeah. Yeah. That used yeah. No, because no people I know people yeah. have done that. I've no, seen. totally. Like, yeah. I think that used to happen a lot more when I started in casting. Like, we I don't think... take headshots in our Not office really. at all. Like I mean yeah. people bring them in and place... just, like we don't have a place no. to store them and I feel bad because it's the, like you the, the they pay money for them and I don't yeah. want it to be wasted on us and no. we do everything digitally. So. Yeah. If you know us, if I've given you my email, I'm cool if you email me. But you better be so really fucking right. right for it. As one example, there was someone, again, I won't say who, that we met that emails us every time mm-hmm. there's a role released. And it'll be for like a 50 year old and a 20 year old and, and this like, for the, and like, uh, you know, the hot girl and the mom. And you're like, you can't be all that. Yeah. Like, if you're 45 and you're, we need a 25 year old. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, know your type. Like, know yeah. your type. Do you no. respond to all the emails or no? I do in the beginning and then it, and after then a while and then, just... then it's like, I, I don't know what to say. But also if you email me the day the breakdown comes out, I've gotten a hundred emails from the agents. So mm-hmm. yeah, chances are I'm not going to like respond right. or again, I might be making an offer to a name right. and then, you know, and again, I realize that actors don't know that side of it. That's what this is for. Are like you they, learning? <laughs> yeah. Give it a couple days. Be mm-hmm. really right for it. Um, and if, again, unless it's TV, then it's quick, right? It's quicker. Like, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Like if, yeah. if the breakdown goes out, yeah, yeah. then like, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's like a guest star or something. Yeah. 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 But yeah. like for like a movie, yeah, give it a couple of days. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> how do you feel about like when you run into actors in real life? And, oh, like, how... this is a great. She has a really good answer for this. If you see me in a bar, like say hi. Like it's fine. Like I'm not always. Um, like if I see you, I'm like, do I know that person? Like, yeah, I'm like, I know. I do that too. Like, but well, because it's you? that thing of you never know. If you'll recognize someone we're just people <laughs> or, really uh, yeah <laughs> shocking <laughs> i actually honestly sometimes get offended if people don't if they act like they've never, never met, met me, me. oh okay. i've run into there's one actor in particular who i've run into five times and i've and it's been work personal whatever and he always introduces himself to me and i'm it offends me i'm like i i have to remember thousands of actors at the drop of a hat and I'm really good with names and faces, so I, again, I, I feel like actors have that against, like, 
it's hard for them because I actually do remember faces and names very easily. So I'll see them on the street. And it will take me a minute because I'll be like, wait, did I watch you on a show? Did I audition you? Or do I, I actually you? maybe, like, are you my friend? <laughs> like, yeah. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. If I have to know thousands of you at the drop of a hat and constantly and even learn more and watch yeah. more and, like, get to know everybody, like, it, it's nice. Like, there's not that many casting people for you to actually remember, like, yeah. our names or, like, last time you auditioned for us or just, like, say hey in the street. Or, and, and you don't have to be our best friend. You don't have to, like, but just, a, like, a, an acknowledgement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when people come into the room, it's big hugs and it's this, and I get that, like, you're there to charm us and mm-hmm. uh, be on your best self. But, yeah, if you see me at, like, a workout class, mm-hmm. like, it's, you know, and again, we're all sweaty, like, I don't always say hi to people either. <laughs> yeah, say hi. Also, fake it till you make it. Like, yeah. if I do say hi to you, I find that when I'm like, oh, hey, yeah, I remember we met, like, it's just so, just... Even if you don't really remember, just pretend. Yeah. yeah. Um, as opposed to that. Making um, it that awkward, like, tense moment of, like, like eh. no, I didn't meet you, and I'm like, no, I remember it was at that party, and, you know, it might have been right. 2011, but there's... We've done classes in the past, and she has these two friends who are bartenders, and... Oh, yeah. We, re- like, it was cool because, again, it's one of those things that they took a class, like, maybe a year ago or something, yeah. and then she just happened to be at a bar with her friends, and they came over, and they just said, hey, and yeah. it turned out they were actually really right for something we were casting, and it yeah. just kind of, like, I was like... So we ended up bringing them in. And again, they weren't they weren't friends. I'd met them in a professional setting, uh, but they recognized me and they sent over some champagne and it was a nice touch and I looked yeah. cool. I looked cool in front of my friends. Uh, and then I brought and I, I brought them in for something. And it wasn't that I wouldn't have brought them in otherwise. I just again we meet so many people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so now every time I go there, it wasn't there, awkward. It wasn't weird. It's like I think actors sometimes can yeah. get in their head of like, oh, like they're you know they're casting like we can't bother them. And it's like, but I will say on the flip side. We can. We've been in so many social situations where, oh, if they, if they maybe don't this. know that you're a casting director, and then you say they ask, "What do you do? What do you do?" and we tell them, and then you like I, you can visibly see, see the, the switch, switch. and yeah. then you're like, "Well, there goes that conversation," because right. like, then you just know from here on out, and it's like, and that's where it gets really frustrating for us. Just be cool. Like we love. We yeah. have tons of friends who are actors. That tons of them never ask us for anything you know but like we try to help them out and we like yeah. we just we all want to do this no, together but, like, you, get, you can't tell if they're like yeah. interested in you as a person exactly or you as your, they just your profession. want something and there's just one story in particular if you've ever met me I've probably told you this story <laughs> um, so I'll keep it brief but basically I was out with some friends and you know just drinking whatever and this person wouldn't give me the time of day like was just, like borderline rude and I was I was hungover I was trying to make friends I was being nice and just wouldn't give me anything. And two hours later, finds out that I'm a casting director and literally was suddenly, suddenly gave a shit about me and wanted to talk to me. And like, just mm-hmm. like, it was like that light. And then it just, it's so obvious. And then I even ended up spending more time with this person later. And instead of being like, oh, hey, how do you know these guys? Or what's, you know, it was like, was as if it was this, you know, right. it was like kind of asking me questions about, you know, and I said, oh, maybe I'll see you at the gym, and it was, you know, the response was, or oh, in the, in the, in the casting room, or, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. so, yeah. again, just, just be human, like, talk right. to, like, just actually, just get to know me yeah. as a person, right. um, and that will go so much Sorry. further, I have plenty of friends that I've met, you know, we were working out together or something, and I said, oh, hey, didn't I, and they're like, hey, do you want to grab coffee, and then now we're, you know, yeah. we're close. I promise you, you don't have to be my best friend, but just be kind. Yeah, be kind. I think kindness goes that a long way in yes. everything in life. And right. It's like, and I do get yeah. there's some casting directors I've worked for some that are scary. very harsh. Like scary. they're a little scary. And I was like, I don't think we give off that presence. We try not to. We, that was one of the things when we first joined our company. <laughs> when we first started, we both said like we want to create a warm environment yeah. for actors to come and feel comfortable to yeah. audition. Like we don't want it to be a scary like oh my gosh, just stand there and like stare at them. And so right. we try to always have conversation, even on the little roles. We'll have, be like, how's your day? How's what's going on? And so I get if you have just gone in an audition for somebody who's maybe not as open and warm, and Read you can tell room. that. Then if yeah. you see them at dinner later that night, then just you know, just like. Maybe see if they like happen to see you, but like yeah. us, like we're pretty open and we're yeah. pretty. Yeah. Again, we try to put a warmth out there because yeah. we just we love actors, we love people, yeah. and we just want to like spread yeah. that. Last things that I wanted to ask you about okay. local casting. Yes. Talk to me about local casting. Extra stuff. <laughs> local casting and extra stuff. And yes. extras. <laughs> yes. Both. Uh, okay. Just to say, it's been a minute since I've been in it. It's for sure, it's changed a little bit. I will say, I I kind of specialize in the South. I know a lot of casting directors down there. A lot of my friends who are actors still uh, down there. It seems to me like the South especially has kind of turned into a uh, self-tape world. Yeah. To me, it doesn't seem like too many people actually go into the room unless it's a callback situation. 
But I will say, I think down there it's really dependent on who your rep is. I don't think it's as hard to get a rep down there as it is, say, here, especially if you have one or two things or if you know somebody in the industry, they can kind of point you in the right way. There's a, just this much smaller smaller version of down there. But local casting was always a blast. Sometimes you'd have these actors who have been in, like, five movies you would recognize them from, but they're a banker. It's not always a full-time job, you know? Like, right, right. Yeah, and they, they just had a really cool job. It'd be like, yeah, I'll take a day off and go do this thing. It's actually hard to make it a full-time job down there. But so, is there a smaller pool of actors down there? There is, yeah, and so there's a smaller know. pool of good actors. Their go-tos are just basically the ones who keep working. I, I think it's harder to learn down there a little bit just because mm-hmm. you don't have as many classes available. I know a couple of casting directors down there who do them that are great. And if they're trying to break into the South and want, and they're not, they don't have credits or anything, I would highly recommend taking one of those classes. I feel like it's LA on a smaller scale. Okay. And so um, when I first started, we were doing auditions in the room, and you had to come in. When I did a short stint down there a few years ago, it wasn't like that at all. I think I had one day of sessions, and that was it. And it's all self-tapes. Um, yeah. yeah, it's all self-tapes, and because everyone's uh, moving now, like so you right. can live anywhere, and like, then as long as five hundred mile radius. Yeah, right, exactly. Like that, right? And it's and it's so easy to get. So like Nashville. And Atlanta are only like four hours away, and then New Orleans is only eight hours from there. So if you you can put in a self tape and still be a local hire and just drive yourself down there the day right. before. So do you guys know like? Because I know a lot of actors that have Atlanta rep, mm-hmm. myself included. <laughs> right. So like, do you yeah. know that that we're LA actors taping for this? That like, would you know? Or my Atlanta agents actually told me that a lot of the Atlanta casting people know who's. Who's actually who's local, local yeah. for his who versus. I think the rep. local casting directors definitely know. Um, LA casting doesn't know. I know just because I know a lot of the actors down right. there, uh, just from my experience, but I don't think that's normal. And so I don't think most of them, LA, they just see like, oh, this guy looks right, let's bring him in. As long as you can actually be a local hire. And like if you're willing to fly, fly yourself, yourself and stuff. Yeah. Right, right, right. And local hire stuff is usually all co stars, right? Mm-hmm. Unless it's like a very specific. And we'll even do like guest stars, honestly, like because there is a really good pool down there. I will say that the actor level, the talent down there has really grown, especially with the tax incentives right. and everything, especially with Atlanta blowing up and all the Marvel stuff going there. Like there is really, really good local talent yeah. down there. And so there are times where every now and again we'll ask, we'll even ask them to look for a series regular. Like on Claws, we hired, we almost hired a series regular from down there. Mm-hmm. So you just never know. Same with Vancouver, real quick. Yeah. Um, that it's blowing up so much that sometimes you can get a recurring role. So maybe actors should start their careers out in one of those. I actually, roles. honestly, like I give that advice to a lot of my friends who are okay. like struggling. Is if they're willing to move, I think you can because I've seen three of my very close friends come and build themselves up from nothing and now they're recurring mm-hmm. and they're getting leads of movies out there and they're mm-hmm. doing indies to the point where now they are, they have agents here and they'll just self-tape mm-hmm. for stuff here and then they'll fly themselves out, out if they yeah. need to come back. And there's a ceiling, but if you're willing to, you know, put in the time, get those credits, I think you're at least coming here. With a resume, with a yeah, good resume. Yeah, as opposed to just mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, one last question. When you have a role that is being cast locally mm-hmm. and also being cast... Um, by LA or New York, whoever the main mm-hmm. casting office is, and you have somebody that's right, like up for it in both parts. Do you find that they tend to cast the local one because it's cheaper, or is it is it really about the best actor? Or it's honestly, it's about the best actor. There is some to, something to say about like credit wise, like when it comes down to, especially like if it's for a TV show and you're looking for a series regular and you're weighing the two. A lot of times, like studios and networks, I have found will approve somebody who comes from LA who maybe has a little bit more like onset experience. Right. But um, maybe for like a smaller role, then for, for like a guest star role, or co star, yeah, it's cheaper I mean, to like. like yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, that just sucks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Extras casting go. Okay. So extra scans, again, it's been a minute since I've done yeah, yeah. it. Because I used to do it by, like, I would literally call every single person on the phone and, like, book them. And then there's, like, a, especially in the South, because people don't do this for a job, they, there would be always, like, a, we had a 20% leeway. So we would have 20% fallout on any given day. So depending on the numbers, so, like, Hannah Montana, we had three days of, like, 2,000 extras. For the carnival scene, if you've ever seen the movie. You had to call, like, 2,400 people. And not even. We had to call, like, close to 3,500 just because, like, a 1,000 people wouldn't show up. Oh, wow. And so we had, like, these different sections. And there's, like, a organist. Like, I love being organized. So, like, there's something that, like, clicked with me that I just understood how to do that. Mm -hmm. And so extras is kind of where I really found my groove. For a while, I actually thought I wanted to be an extras casting director until I realized how miserable it is. Yeah. Um, Because literally you have people, if somebody, if an extra doesn't show up on the set and it's like a five day, it's like five people showing up that day, Mm -hmm. you have an AD screaming at you at two in the morning. So I've been woken up out of dead sleeps. I used to work like 
20 hours a day. Like, it's just like you're never off because even if they're on nights, they're on nights, but then you have to call everybody during the day. So, but I do, I encourage extra work for people who haven't been on set because it gives you um, set experience. experience. Yeah. It shows you, and then you can even watch some of the time, like how the actors work. And yeah. Like, if you're watching Mila Kunis, you're just like watching her, you're like, oh, that's so cool. Like, look how she yeah. threw out that improv line, or, yeah. you know, Catherine Hahn, and like, it's just really cool Learning to like watch them. Yeah. yeah. And see kind of how sets run and who's in charge and what not to do and what to do and how to... Because, again, extras are really there not to be heard. So, like, don't ever, like, make a hubbaloo about anything. Like, you know? Don't put extra work on your resume. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Like, don't try to, and don't try to fake it. Like, if, yeah. be honest yeah. about it. Yeah. I'll say, I think everybody should do extra work once in their life. Yeah. I do yeah. say, like... It's fun. I've like it. I've done it. I we've done it. Yeah. In terms of casting, you literally just going through and picking. Yeah. So we would you want. get. So we would get yeah. breakdowns of like the scene. So like if we had a restaurant scene, we would you say like okay. That. The, we the 80s would say okay. I need 40 people, and then we'd break it down. We'd be like okay. Is it an upscale sit restaurant? Because then mostly it's going to be older people, and then we do, do like a breakdown of like ethnicities and ages and female, male. Like are you having a girls' night or you know or figure out a bar? Right. Like is it going to be. Like for bad moms, there was a sexy Santa competition. It was almost pretty much all women there. Right. Like so, you have to, you choose what you want. We have files of people. So when I very first started, it was literal. We would have open calls and we would have paper files with their pictures. So I would sit there and go through and pick out every single person and then call them to see if they're available. And then if uh. they're available, book them, which just really meant them being like, okay. And then I get their email and I'd be like, okay. And then the night before, right. I would send them all the information and they have to confirm. And then if they didn't confirm, mm-hmm. I try to track them down. Half of them would drop out. Mm-hmm. So and it's just like this, ma- and then you have like to find madness. new people. Yeah. And, and there was always, in the same spot yeah. that that person yeah. filled in. And there was, it was nice because I was right out of college. So a lot of times if I lost somebody, I would call one of my buddies and be like, Hey, do you want to come be an extra tomorrow? Like you'll get a hundred bucks. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and so I, I was able to like work some of that magic, but then you always have the featured extras, which is fun. So you actually get yeah. to choose. I used to actually have a Facebook page that had like 20,000 people on it. Mm-hmm. And I gave it back to an old boss of mine in Nashville just because she just so she could have that at her disposal. But I created my own Facebook database while I was down yeah. there for extra work so that if somebody fell out and I needed somebody, I would just post on the Facebook page and then I'd, hmm. somebody would say, I'm available, shoot me an email, and I would email them and they'd go. Wow. Yeah. And then how would you pick, like, wait, like, like, like if you had, like, a blonde, blue-eyed girl as one of your things, like, how would you pick which blonde, blue-eyed girl is the one that you call? If it was, like, featured, I would pick, like, five of them and then I would run it by like the director or something if it was somebody that they needed an input on if not i usually would just pick yeah just pick. <laughs> i would just pick one <laughs> any australians watching i did extra work on neighbors for literally a week i was just filling in for someone and it really is just it's a numbers game and it's i like that person's face yeah <laughs> like right, right, it's, right. it's sometimes as yeah. simple right, right, right. As, yeah and, and there then, are like, like shows that like for like vampire hours i'm yeah. sure you have to keep rehiring yeah, yeah. Students, so like, there's the like, exactly. Students. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode with these lovely ladies. Thank you so these ladies Aww. for coming in. They're so great. They're the sweetest. <laughs> I will put all their plugs in the bottom so you can follow them on in, whatever. And then if you have any other questions you want to ask, let me know. Blah blah. blah. And if you have any like, like all the comments and I have no one on Bye.